welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylia, if you have not met me yet. Um, so today we're going to keep it very, very simple. Um, it's kind of a gloomy day outside, but I do have some errands to run. Um, I went and worked out this morning. Um, I went to Memorial Park, did a run, went on a little hike. So I was out there for a minute. So I came back, showered, ate some food, played with Celine a little bit, and now I'm getting ready. And it's literally like 2 p.m. But I've been up since like 7.30, so I've had a pretty eventful morning so far. Um, but yeah, I figured I would just have a little chit chat, get ready with me, so you guys can kind of get to know me a little bit more. Feel me? Feel me? So if you're doing your makeup, fabulous. We can do it together. And if you're not doing your makeup, get some Cheetos, have a snack. So I think this is going to be a long one. I'm going to try to go quickly because I do... I've gotten in the habit of doing my makeup very slowly only because um, I don't really wear makeup during the week anymore. So the main reason I don't wear makeup during the week anymore is simply because I wear a mask and or I'm always in like video slash phone conference calls since COVID started. So I'm not really like in an office or like looking at people really without a mask. So I kind of stopped wearing makeup during the week because honestly it just rubs off on the inside of your mask, which is really annoying. So I honestly don't see much of a point anymore when it comes to like, you know, day to day makeup. Um, I'll do like my brows and I always wear mascara and that's pretty much the extent um, of my, you know, my weekly makeup. So I do my makeup on the weekends all the time because that's the only time I really like can even be seen with makeup because um, I do like to go out with coworkers or you know, Victor's in town, I go out with him. So even if I'm at the grocery store, like I'll throw on some lashes so I can feel like kind of cute, you feel me? Um, but I do love the process of putting on makeup. I obviously, like I don't, I'm not the type of person where, you know, I need makeup to feel like put together um, with me it's always like one or the other it always has to either be like my hair or my makeup if it's both great if it's not also great at least one of them has to be done correctly it's normally got to be like my hair I would rather like I remember my hairdresser asked me once like if you could go a lengthy amount of time without one or the other like which one would it be and I said probably makeup because you can always work on your skin and you can always make that look fire without makeup. But if your hair is always looking like, you know, a hornet's nest, no bueno. You feel me? No bueno. So I definitely chose hair. I always do my brows first because that's normally the thing that takes me the longest amount of time. Um, and it normally sets the mood for what I either have the patience for for the rest of the look or what I have time for if I'm, you know, on a time limit. So it all just depends on my brows, to be completely honest. Some days my brows take very little time and some days like today, they just, you know, a hot mess so I had to go in and clean them up a little bit but anyways like I was saying before I really don't wear makeup during the week anymore so that's why I go a little I go all out now um, when it comes to like everyday makeup because I only wear makeup like a full face I only wear full faces on like Saturdays sometimes Sundays um, today is a Sunday so today is one of those days where you know kind of going all out today. I figured I could answer some questions that I have been getting from like high school friends, from family, um, so on and so 
forth because a lot has happened in my life in the past, what, like four months? Um, and the main thing being that I moved from South Florida, which is where I went to college, um, to Houston, Texas. That's where I live now. Um, so long story short, when I was still in college, when I was a senior, um, so this past spring, 2020, I started interviewing for jobs and looking for jobs. Um, I was working at Marriott Vacation Club, which is basically the sister company to Marriott International. Um, so Marriott Vacation Club focuses more on like timeshares and more like luxurious um, vacation spots. So you're gonna find those and like, you know, pretty much wherever people want would want a timeshare. So like, you know, we have like ski locations, we have Europe locations, or we like I still work there. They <laughs> have those different types of locations. So I was in activities slash events at Marriott. Um, and honestly, I wanted to become like a big time event planner. So I was looking more into like Marriott International, like their internships slash like job opportunities for after I graduated. And I wasn't having any luck. So I attended a career fair um, unexpectedly. I honestly wasn't really like looking to go to that career fair. I remember I only went because my boyfriend Victor was going. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll just stop in like on my way to class and I met in person. I met like three or five, three to five companies that I did end up starting interview processes with. So this was in February. So February, March. So by March I was interviewing well into interviewing with a lot of these companies. One of them being the company I currently work for. Um, so once April hit, if you guys remember the timeline, that's when COVID literally just took a turn for the worst. Um, also, the lighting is changing outside because it's very cloudy and rainy today. So that's going to mess up all of my lighting right now. But bear with me. <laughs> um, so basically... I was interviewing with all these people and then in April when COVID got really bad, everybody put a hold on all of their interview processes, which was really, really stressful um, for me personally because I was like, well, that I mean, I guess that means I'll just be at Marriott longer than I thought. Um, and I guess I'm just gonna have to do what I can at Marriott. But then I remember towards the mid to late, April, we started hearing, you know, that a lot of departments were going to have to start furloughing people that weren't essential. And because we were events or I was in events and activities, that was obviously one of the things that started to become not as essential because um, I think Trump had declared um he passed something that said we couldn't any type of social gatherings could not be over like eight people or like something like a weird number like that or seven people i forgot um so we got i got for load in april sometime in april and we just didn't know like when we would go back to work it was like very very stressful and i was like dang it now i really need to start looking like seriously but i wasn't even looking for like career type jobs i started applying at like target like walmart things like that i wasn't getting any luck there which i low-key think was a sign at that time but i was just too stressed to really realize it and then i just stayed very persistent i started emailing the companies i was interviewing with prior to the pandemic starting um and luckily the company slash corporation that I currently work for responded. They liked how persistent I was and how I kept asking. Like I remember every few weeks I would email just like trying to check what was going on, like what was happening, were they gonna continue to hire, whatever, whatever. Luckily they were and they hired me. 
I got hired in literally like I think it was like a week or two after I got furloughed thank goodness um, because I was really scared because um, I knew I was graduating and I was like oh my god like what am I gonna do am I gonna have to move in back with my mom or am I gonna have to move in with my boyfriend like what's gonna happen so luckily they did give me an opportunity but one of the catches I guess was that I would have to move, basically relocate, because they did, all of the the team that they had in Florida was full. There was no um, spots open. And honestly, I was okay with moving. I'm the type of person, I've lived in multiple areas in my life. Um, I'm originally from California, and then I moved to Florida when I was in middle school. And then I went to college in South Florida. So I'm very like open to moving. It's not something that does not scare me. And the corporation um, that I work for now, they're big on relocation. Like any type of promotion you get, any type of um, opportunity you get, you're normally gonna have to move. And luckily the company is big enough and amazing enough to pay for everything. I did not have to pay for anything that went into my move. And if I did, they reimbursed it, um, which was amazing. So I got myself this big girl job and I had to make a big girl move. And that is why I'm currently in Houston, Texas. Um, I have been thinking about like making a video, giving more in depth like advice for college students right now who are trying to find work, who, you know, aren't sure what's gonna happen when they graduate, because it was not easy. It definitely was a process. Like I said, I started looking in February and I didn't get hired until like um, basically May. Um, and then I moved in, it was literally the last week of May. So I got the position and then they were like, you literally have this amount of time to decide and then this amount of time to move to Houston and start because I did my start date was June 8th so I had to find an apartment I had to get you know my energy taken care of I had to make sure everything in Florida was taken care of because I had a leased car I had to like figure out what I was going to do with everything I had to get rid of a lot of things because I wanted to make sure I could fit, fit everything into like one new haul so that was just like that was a mess <laughs> Um, also just real quick, I am going to put all of these products in the description box. I use very basic products. A lot of them are drugstore and or Ulta, um, products. I have some high end products that I'll use on a daily basis, but not very many. Um, for example, this is literally the Maybelline Fit Me foundation. I've been using this since high school. I've used a lot of different foundations in my 22 years of life but I will say I always find myself going back to the fit me foundation I just love it it works for my skin and it's one of the few foundations I can find in my shade all the time all the time it always matches pretty well I'm not gonna lie um but yeah that was why I moved to Houston that's why I'm here um and Honestly, that's a big reason why I started this YouTube channel because throughout like high school and college, I was always a busy bee. Um, I remember my junior to senior year, I was basically working full time and I was a full time student. I almost graduated early. Technically, I still kind of graduated early, but I graduated within my like timeline that they had set up for me when I was a freshman. Um, I just extended my time there because I could have graduated in 2019 when I was 21 and I graduated in 2020 when I was 22 um, because I did add a double major last minute um, which is a whole nother story let me tell ya um, but basically high school and college anyone who knows me from those times knows i was always busy i was always going i was always like um 
had somewhere to be at all times. I remember in college I was psychotic because not only was I double majoring and I had a minor, but I had a full-time job. I was working at Marriott five days out of the week, had classes two days out of the week, and somehow fit in some organizations into all of that mess. Um, looking back, I unfortunately did not give 100% to some of those organizations my senior year. When I was younger, like freshman, sophomore year, any organization I was in normally had more of my time, more of my focus, but because I became very busy and I was trying to be financially independent my junior and senior year, I just, I honestly half-assed a lot of the organizations I was in towards the end. But, you know, I digress and life goes on. We're on to bigger and better things and we're here now. You know, college graduate with a job, having my own apartment, and my kitty cat, and I'm doing just fine. But going back to why I started this YouTube channel, basically, I just had too much free time. You know, now that I'm living over here, I am doing long distance with my boyfriend. He does visit a lot, um, but... I have a lot, a lot, a lot of free time um, because I work Monday through Friday and then, you know, I pretty much have afternoons and like my weekend to myself and I've gotten back into working out. That's something I kind of like lost a little bit when I got into the current relationship I'm in right now. But when I moved here, I was like, well, I got all this time. Might as well get my body back to where it once was, you know, you feel me? Um, but that only takes so much of my time. And like, I honestly, 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 I honestly grocery shop a lot and online shop a lot. So I kind of wanted a hobby that like takes me away from spending money. <laughs> um, and I also just missed being creative. A lot of the organizations I joined in college allowed me to be creative, um, whether it was modeling, whether it was, you know, organizing events, whether it was, you know, helping with PR. Like, it was always something that I was doing that allowed me to get my creativity going and flowing. So... I'm kind of missing out on that over here. Um, I am creative at work. Um, I am in sales and marketing, but it's only so much creativity I can do because the company I work for is so big and so established that we already have like a rep reputation as a company. So we're only adding on to whatever that reputation is. We're not creating anything like new really. Um, I mean, we kind of are, but like not really. So I just needed something that was going to help me be creative and, you know, let me have fun and, you know, do something that puts me out there and gets me out of my comfort zone. And honestly, I've always wanted a YouTube channel. I've wanted one since I was like a wee little teen in high school, but my mama was very strict when it came to the internet. I was even barely allowed to have an Instagram at that age. Like, I remember I only got an Instagram because I lied about it. And my when my mom found out, she was like, we're deleting it. This is ridiculous. Of course, she didn't know how to delete Instagram. So, kind of got away with it. Love you, mama. I really do. But I just wanted to be on Instagram. You feel me? That's what I wanted. So, I was like, you know what? If there's a time for anything, it's now because, especially with everything going on in the world, we need a little creativity in our lives. You feel me? You feel me. So, that's basically why I started this channel. Just to have, like, a creative outlet. It's really all it is for me. I really can't find my blush brush right now. And... Dang, I really don't know where my blush brush is. Oh wait, we'll use this old one. <laughs> this blush brush is literally from like 2014, I swear. This was like one of the first brushes I ever 
found or bought because I can't find my normal blush brush. Let me tell you guys, I've gone through quite the evolution when it comes to blush. I did not wear it. I started wearing makeup it, at 16 years old, I believe, because I was in Barbizon modeling and acting classes. Shout out to anyone who was in Barbizon. Shout out to you. Um, that was my mother agency, actually, when I started modeling when I was a wee little baby. But um, they, one of the segments of Barbizon is they teach you how to do your makeup because they are big believers in, you know, if you're just starting out as a model, a lot of times you're not gonna have a makeup artist because you're not doing gigs like that big yet. So they're like, you gotta know how to do your makeup. Otherwise, you're gonna look like a fool when you show up to a photo shoot or a casting. So that's when I started wearing makeup and I hated, hated blush. I was like, I'm not trying to look like a little porcelain doll. I don't like it. So I was a big bronzer girl. I loved bronzer and I used to use this like, it was like a shimmer bronzer from like Hard Candy. If you know that brand, you can get it at like Walmart. Um, <laughs> I used to like douse my face in this shimmer bronzer it was pretty don't get me wrong but like i don't know what the heck i was doing like ugh, looking back at some pictures i'm just like honey come on get it together get it together but for some weird reason one day in college i think i was going on a date or something and i was like you know what let's just put a little bit of blush on it was from like a selena mac compact that had bronzer in it and like this pink blush and I tried it and I put a little bit of highlight on top and I was like you know what I look popping like I look good like I'm trying to look cute on this date or whatever um and ever since then let me tell you I'm a blush fiend I literally put blush, if you didn't just notice, I literally put it here, 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 here. And I actually forgot to put it on my nose, so I'm gonna go back and put it on my nose because I just love looking, you know, like I'm sunburnt and I got a cold. I love it. I love it so much. So let me go back. Put some on right here. Look at that. Game changer. Look at that. Look at what that does. Oh my God. And then I'm gonna use, I honestly don't wear eyeshadow really. I like to use like bronzers. Actually, let me use the Too Faced. Look at how beat up this is. I've literally had this since the, the dawn of time when dinosaurs were around. Like, look at that. I need to probably buy a new one. It's about that time. I need to grow up. Come on. Come on, Kaylee. I get it together. Oh, it still smells so good. But this is a bronzer. I do this a lot, I cheat a lot when it comes to eyeshadow, because who has time? Not me. Not me, let me tell you. And then I'll take a little bit down here. So I would honestly describe my makeup style aesthetic ways <laughs> as very like snack like natural snatched I like to look like I don't have makeup on like I, I'm big on accentuating is that the word accentuating what you already have going on you know I like to bring attention to what I already have what mama gave me and God blessed me with and just kind of like making little things pop. I don't like, I don't wear eyeliner anymore. I, to, to be completely honest with you, I don't think I know how to put eyeliner on anymore. If I tried, it'd probably go really bad. <laughs> really bad. What I do for eyeliner is literally, I'll take a dark 
bronzer or I'll take like a, like a dark, let's use this one actually, like a dark eyeshadow like this. Put it on like a little, um, what is this, eyeshadow or eyebrow brush and I'll do a little wing. Let me show you. Let me speed it up though. And that's it. There's my eyeliner. So I would honestly suck. I think the last time I did eyeliner was literally Halloween of 2020. No, wait. Halloween of 2019. Lord knows how I did that. Because I don't, I can't do it anymore. Um, which is insane. I thought I heard Celine. I get asked here and there, like, you know, what made me get a cat? Because... I'm actually allergic to cats, like very allergic to cats. I remember in high school, I was, I would pick up, I remember I had a family friend that had like a kitten and I loved how cute and little it was. And I had him on my chest and I just broke out in hives and my throat got all like tight and bothered. And I was like, oh my God, get it away from me. This demon of an animal is killing me and then i just went and got a cat last year and i was just like basically how my love started for cats is not even for cats i love black cats a lot black cats just like mm, i have an obsession with like magic and like witches i remember when i was little i was literally a witch for like five halloweens in a row like my mom would always ask me don't you want to be Elle, don't you want to be like Pocahontas or like Ariel and I'd be like no mom I want to be a witch get me a broom get me a broom and I wasn't playing like I was obsessed even when I played on the playground with like the other kids we always played a lot of like magic games or like sorcery games and I was always the head witch and I remember I had a friend in college that had a black cat. And he, like, when he got this cat, I was like, what even are you doing? Like, who, what, what possessed you to get a cat? And when I would play with his cat, I was like, I understand. Your cat is so friendly, like, so playful, so funny. Like, I just can't. I'm obsessed obsessed and then from that moment forward i realized cats are pretty low maintenance they don't need a lot of like space they don't need a lot of care and i was so busy in college that i was like you know what this is the perfect pet for a busy owner the perfect pet you know you just put the litter box there you barely have to train them they pretty much know what to do they're very clean it's not like a puppy where you have to give them like your arm a leg and your entire like soul to train them to like pee correctly um and they're just so low maintenance and they're they can be friendly and i was like you know what it's got to be like a black cat thing it's got to be like that's what i gotta get that's literally what i gotta get and it was very random i remember I became very obsessed with trying to find the perfect cat like I wanted the perfect cat for me and at Marriott one day there was a girl working in the kitchen that came running into the activities room and she was like oh my god oh my god there's kittens up front under the shelter under like the shed that engineering used to use and I was like where what can I go like can I go snatch one for myself we never found them. We tried so hard. I used to leave like tuna out there, like little slices of chicken, like ham, like things like that. Never found these kittens, never. I saw them once because they peeked out like a little bit one time and I was like, oh my God, like, can you come love me? Didn't happen, did not happen. And then I remember, I think it was like a week or two after that. I'm gonna try to get, go ahead and put these on. Um, let me do that real quick and then I'm gonna finish the story because this is this is gonna take me a second. Hold on. All done. <laughs> Definitely took me two seconds. Lies. 
Um, so I remember like a week or two after the kittens under the shed happened, um, one of my coworkers who I'm still really close with actually, Nicole, shout out to you because I would not have found someone without you. Um, so she hit me up because she went to some like consignment store with one of her friends and the owner had like two little kittens, not kittens, but like young cats chilling at the consignment store and she was looking for like owners for them. And she, Nicole hit me up because her friend took Celine's sister, um, but she couldn't take Celine and the consignment store was closing. Like they were going out of business in like a week or two. And Nicole hit me up and she's like, do you still want a cat? Like there's a cat here. And if no one takes her, like if the owner doesn't find someone for her, she's going to have to take her to the, you know, shelter. And I was like, where's the address? I have a beauty mark right here and right here that I always have to like bring out after the makeup. So I'm not drawing fake ones. These are real. I'm just enhancing them. Um, anyway, so I went, she gave me the address. No! We'll fix it. Uh, he gave me the address, so I went with Victor. And I picked her up, and literally from the moment I met this cat, I was like, she's the one. She's the one I've been waiting for, the one I've been wanting, and that was that. It was a wrap. Because I remember I was walking around the consignment store because I was like, you know, while I'm here, we'll see what they got going on. Because I'm a huge thrifter. And I uh, just like around, let's see what's going on. And literally Celine was so cute. She was like following me around, like at my feet, like trying to play. And I was like, honey, we're going to be two peas in a pod. Like I already know it. I already know it. And from that moment on, mm, mm, mm. don't mess with my cat because you're going to have to mess with me. I love my cat. That's my baby. That's my little child. But I do lock her out of here um, when I'm filming because that girl, she's feisty. I do want to get a tattoo. I found this really cute tattoo on Pinterest uh, where it's like a, a girl's hand with like a manicure and then a little kitty paw right under it and I'm like you know what I'm gonna do it I'm just like waiting on it I need to find a tattoo artist in Houston because I only have these two right here they're babies they like were nothing they cost like $50 each nothing too crazy um but I want like real I think I'm ready for some big boys cuz mm, begin the itch been getting the itch for a tattoo so I have any viewers from this area, hook a sister up, cause Lord, honestly, this is the best lip gloss. This was a gift and I already knew it was gonna be bomb. I knew it was gonna be bomb. I just never, I've never gone around to buying Fenty. Uh, I've always meant to, cause I love Rihanna. She's my like queen, right under Selena, of course. I just never got around to buying Fenty. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's because it's at Sephora and I kind of stopped shopping at Sephora. But when I got this and I tried it on the first time, I was like, oh. where have you been all my life? Like, where? Not here. Clearly, because I needed you. But, you know, whatever. All right. So. I am going to spray some Evian setting spray. I use this guy because it's literally just water in a can, bougie um, water <laughs> in a can. But I just love what it does for my skin. It just hydrates me and makes me feel like, you know, a juicy bitch. We're back. My hair is straight. My hoops are in. And we're feeling cute. Hi, guys. 
All right, so the last step to any good makeup routine is lay your baby hairs. So let me do that real fast. Hold on. We are ready for our day. I do a few grown up things and we're looking fly while we do it. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Thank you so much for sitting here with me and just hanging out, chit-chatting, getting to know me a little bit, and getting snatched. Other than that, like, subscribe, stay tuned, hit that bell if you want to, so you know when the next video comes out. See you in the next one. Why are dogs in the hallway? Like, are they getting murdered? Oh my God.